Okay, my intuition never lies. Hey guys, this is Jeanette. Hope you're all doing well. Quick video. Well, not so quick. I really want to get your ideas of how something like this would work. I would love to be able to kind of review my notes and kind of study with you guys. So um, let me know what you think of this. I'm just going over the first sheet of my um, handwritten notes of my exam one. It's just on the cell. So I chose something, you know, kind of basic. Um, but let me know what you think. Is this effective? Is this wasting your time? Um, any ideas on how we can do more study with me uh, type of video? So I would really appreciate it. I'm just going to kind of talk through my first page. This will just be kind of a trial in terms of should I do longer, um, what do you call that? Study with me or watch me study videos because I'm not trying to waste your time here, right? Uh, okay, 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 okay. So, where were we? So the cell. Um, so there's two types of cell, prokaryote, eukaryote. I know prokaryotes are about 3 billion years old or million. I don't know. I just know it's uh, referring to a single cell. Um, has a single cellular chromosome. There's no nucleus in the prokaryote versus the eukaryote is more complex, has a bunch of more uh, organelles and are found in higher or complex beings like us. So, um, let's see. So the eukaryote has histones that bind with DNA. So I know the nucleus is in the eukaryote cell. It's a double membrane or surrounded by a double membrane. Uh, the histones bind with the DNA into folding into a chromosome and the whole purpose is to prevent the breakage of these chromosomes that could lead to um, their genetic issues. Also in the eukaryote Nucleus it stores genetic information. It's also responsible for repairing and replicating of DNA and the transcription of genetic information uh, by RNA. Okay, so then epigenetics, we are now figuring out that the cell interacts with the environment. It's not just, I guess, being told by just the nucleus on what to do. So the environment is very important in the action of a cell. In the plasma membrane, it has five different functions. He's growling at me. <laughs> and I remember spat C. So S for structure, uh, P for protection, A for activation, T for um, transportation, I believe. And then C is for cellular to cell uh, communication. So organelles synthesize proteins, transport proteins, Isolate and eliminate waste, uh, involved in metabolic processes, breakdown of antigens, maintain cellular structure, and uh, motility. Okay, okay. Polar attracts, nonpolar does not attract, it's lipid soluble, and that has to do with your um, cell membrane. You have a lipid bilayer. All right, lysosomes, which is an organelle in the cell. Lysosome, okay. It's important because I have three different um, diseases that were mentioned in my lecture. So the accumulation of um, glycosides leads to the development of POMP disease. The accumulation of GM2 ganglosides, yeah, leads to Tay-Sachs disease, and we just did a case study on it. And then um, the accumulation of uric acid leads to gout. Okay. All right, let's talk about ribosome. Okay, so we talked about the lysosome. I know about the three different diseases that were mentioned in lecture and what that looks like in terms of what's accumulated. So those are considered lysosomal diseases. And then I have um, my ribosome, which I know is responsible for uh, protein synthesis. So I need to get this together because ribosomes and mitochondria do a lot 
for us in terms of energy uh, production. Okay, so ribosome site for cellular protein synthesis. Um, oxidative phosphorylation occurs in the mitochondria. Okay, so the Krebs citric cycle occurs in the ribosome. So the ribosome, that's where the Krebs cycle occurs, all of those processes, but the actual production of ATP is in the mitochondria. And you can tell ribosome versus mitochondria. <laughs> I hope I can tell that. Okay, um, so in the Krebs citric cycle, two things are occurring is cellular respiration, which ultimately leads to ATP production, and then protein synthesis and hydrolysis. Okay. Um, in terms of my receptors, so I believe these are the receptors or membrane proteins that are in the cell wall. So there's two different, there's the effector receptors as well as the you know they are responsible for the awareness of the environment. What is it called? <laughs> receptor protein. So we have two different INPs. One is a receptor protein, then two is the effector proteins, and that's what I know. The effector, I'm using the EF, kind of similar with the AC of action. Um, so the effector proteins are responsible for actually playing out the action, and there's three different types. So it's your um, chemical receptor, your cytoskeletal receptor, and what is it? Chemical, cytoskeletal, enzymes, enzymes, responsible for breaking down. Okay. <sighs> So um, we're talking about action potential membrane, referring to the sodium and potassium pump, you know, three sodiums um, out of the cytoplasm and then two potassiums go into the cytoplasm, therefore creating a membrane potential. So more is coming in than coming out, therefore you're creating that. Okay, we talked about the Krebs cycle. Okay, so the way we make energy. <laughs> The way we make energy, guys, it's the Krebs cycle or glycolysis. But which one's more effective? The Krebs cycle because it produces 36 ATPs versus just the measly two. Okay. All right, so peroxisomes causes metabolic oxidation of per, uh, hydrogen peroxide. So the whole big deal about the hydrogen peroxide I learned is that it acts as a free radical. So it becomes unstable. So I was looking for um, other electrons to become more stable, but then it can initiate like these uh, chain reactions, um, which could potentially weaken and kind of kill the cell wall. And then you kind of are susceptible for um, a lot of tissue damage and cell damage. So, regarding the hydrogen, the whole story of it is um, whenever you put it on a cup, which, like, you may have an infection, the process of it actually bubbling up and all of that is it's actually breaking down that cell wall, therefore it's killing that bacteria, and that's how it's cleansing the wound. Okay. But you cannot leave the hydrogen peroxide on there for too long or it will cause a lot more damage. So free radicals are bad. Free radicals are, are bad, at least in this instance. Okay. So methods of communicating is hormonal, paracrine, autocrine, and neural. It's hormonal, like the thyroid. A paracrine, local reaction, autocrine, chemical release inside the own cell and neural signaling by neurotransmitters. Okay. So we already talked about the mitochondria, which causes oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphoryl phosphorylation. Okay, and then we're going back, sidetracking, or backtracking, that the oxidative phosphorylation occurs in the mitochondria, and the protein <coughs> synthesis occurs in the ribosome. Bailey? Okay, so then alterations of cells. Okay, there are six different ways that cells are alterated. <laughs> Use those keywords, people. Okay, one is atrophy. Let me see if I can list them. Atrophy, um, 
Hyperplasia, metaplasia, mm -mm -mm. hypertrophy. Yeah. Okay, let's read them. So atrophy, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, hormonal, dysplasia, and metaplasia. Okay, so I missed the hormonal and dysplasia. So atrophy, I know it's a decrease in size. We always talk about muscle atrophy, so it's a decrease in size. Hypertrophy, we talk about like left ventricular hypertrophy when um, the heart is overworking itself and therefore it's uh, left ventricle grows, so left ventricular hypertrophy. Um, the third one is hyperplasia. Plasia, play, too much at play, so therefore um, cells are dividing into an increased number. Hyperplasia. So increased number of cells due to demand, increased cell division. Maybe I have that wrong there. I think that increased demand is for the left ventricular hypertrophy. So the hyperplasia is an increased number of cells from increased cell division. So cell division increased more at play, more dividing, hyperplasia. Okay. Hormonal. Uh, this was the referencing like the whole menstrual cycle, the luminizing hormone, and then how your lining proliferates, and that's, uh, I guess, every first 14 days. So, okay, I remember that. Dysplasia, abnormal change in size, shape, um, or organization. And the example that they had was cervical, bronchial, or neo, uh, related to neoplasms. Dysplasia, dysplasia. Abnormal change, okay? Metaplasia, reversible replacement. Oh, so metaplasia is reversible, re reversible, so it's replacing, um, I guess, a damaged mature cell with a healthy mature cell. And the whole example I think that they were talking about was if someone were a smoker, how, you know, the lungs kind of heal um, and all of that. So that is pretty much, oh, hold on, we forgot. So there's four different types of cells that do not uh, regenerate. So it's your nerve, your lens, your myocardial. What is it? What's that last one? Nerves, lens, myocardial, and skeletal? <laughs> skeletal muscle. Okay, so cell types that do not regenerate nerve, skeletal muscle, myocardial, and lens of the eye. All right, you guys, so that was my review of the cell. Let me know, was this effective? Do you want to see more of this? Oh, this is really, really, really long, so you're probably going to get um, snippets of this. So, yeah, let me know what you think, and then I can either continue going as I review my stuff or call this it. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you have any comments, uh, leave it in the section below. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe and share the videos. Bye.